Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bless and good morning to all of you. I greet you all in no other name but the precious name of Jesus. Those of you that are viewing us on live stream, I welcome you as you join worshiping the Lord with us this morning in your home. Amen. Hallelujah. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We worship you. Hallelujah. We welcome you in this place. So we know you are here. Thank you, Jesus. We exalt, we exalt the name of our wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And this morning, I ask Lizzie to open us in prayer this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we bless your name, Lord. We magnify Hallelujah. and glorify your most holy and precious name in this place, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we can all come and gather this morning, Lord, to lift your name, Father. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for being in the midst, Lord Jesus, of your people, Father, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, that even as those who come, Lord, and who are still to come within your house, Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord, that you will hasten their footsteps, Father. Lord, I pray, Lord, even those on the live stream, Lord Jesus, that their hearts and lives will be touched as well, even as all hearts and lives are touched in your presence, Lord. Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord, that all that is to be said and done in your house, Lord, will be done, Lord, under the power and the anointing of your Holy Spirit, Father. And we thank you, Lord, and we welcome you in this place, Father. We welcome you in our lives, Lord, in our homes, Lord Jesus. We welcome you, Father. We bless your name, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. We honor you this morning, Jesus. Jesus. We say, worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Come on, we will. We will rejoice. We will rejoice.
Even in your home, those of you that are viewing this morning, come on, God is able to touch you right there in your home. Amen. As you reach out to the Lord, as you claim your victory in the name of yeah. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you thanks. Hallelujah. Because all the praise and all the honor belongs to Jesus. Amen. Amen. For the many blessings. He has blessed us with. Amen. So we say thank you, Jesus, in advance and what you are going to do for us. Hallelujah. We bless his name. We bless his name. Hallelujah. I want to sing this song. Every time I turn around, God is blessing me. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for his blessing. Every time I turn around, God is blessing me. Yes, every time. Every time I turn around, God is blessing me. Every time. Every time I turn around, God is blessing me. Hallelujah, praise the Lord.
And this morning, we want to say congratulations to Abigail this morning, Amen. passing up her exam. Amen. And even those of you who are viewing and we do not know, congratulations to you and even to the parents. Amen. Hallelujah. And also, we still rejoicing for the blessing for Lizzie. Amen. Amen. Say congratulations. Amen. Because we have seen the blessing. Amen. As we remain faithful to God. Amen. As we always say, Matthew 6 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all his things shall be added unto you. All right, so congratulations to you, Abigail, and parents. Amen. Hallelujah. So this morning, you may have your seat, and Sister Nisha will come and read the scripture for us this morning. and good morning to each and every one of you. And I greet you all in the powerful name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this morning. This morning our scripture is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 13 and verses 1 to 12. Acts chapter 13 and verses 1 to 12. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene, and Manan, which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they had also John, to their minister. And when they had gone through the Isle of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus, which was uh, with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elimus, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the feet. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, Thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to prevent the right ways of the Lord? And now, 
Behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a reason. And immediately there fell on him a midst of darkness. And it went about seeking some to lead him by the, land, by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word this morning. Hallelujah. This morning, as we go into our worship, I would like you all to stand and welcome the Holy Spirit into your hearts this morning as we continue in worship. Hallelujah. As the Bible said, they that worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. So let us look to the Lord, not to the person next to us, but we're looking up to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Come on, just raise your voice. Worship Him. Thank Him. Hallelujah. He has been faithful to us. And many times we fail him. God remains faithful. Yes, he's a faithful servant. A faithful master. Hallelujah. Lord, to worship you. Heavy spirit of destruction. We come against it in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Holy Spirit, let's move. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, if it does in your home, my God. Jesus, Jesus. Let them take that time off to worship you, my God. Just as Mary did.
you lift your hands
Jesus, 
King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. We give you praise. We give you thanks for your name is worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated in his presence this morning as I hand right over to Pastor. Come on, put your hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Nobody else but Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Once again, pleasant morning to each and every one of you. And happy to have you in the house of the Lord. The best place to be is in the house of the Lord. As the scripture says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves as the manner of summit. But come together. And he said, where two or three are gathered... There he is in the midst. Hallelujah. And you know where God is, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, we thank God for these wonderful young people of our church that are excelling. And um, we have Abigail with us. Come, Abigail. Give her a big round of applause. I just want to highlight these two young people. And plus we have Dr. Elizabeth Budram with us. Come. These two young people, you know, they make the church very happy. Come, come on, come on. And, uh, you know, Abigail, how many subjects you did? She did nine subjects, all right? And how many ones you got? Six ones. All right, give her a big round of applause. Let's imagine these children are so bright, you know, and thank God. And uh, let us hear oh, how you were able to make it. Amen. Good morning, church. Greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. So my testimony is basically about my CSAC journey. Um, considering all the online pandemic and stuff, they weren't really considering to give us topics that they usually do so it was kind of hard for me because one minute they're giving us it next minute they're not so I started studying early and after they released topics I realized half of the stuff I studied not even come and I stress on myself for nothing so I had to go and restudy again and it had so much of stuff to learn in that short amount of time that I used to just pick and choose stuff like some things that even on the topic list I used to be like, nah, that's too long to learn. I'm going to learn that. I'll just swing it. And exactly what I learned was exactly what used to come on the paper, and I was able to apply it. And I just thank God for that because every, like, every time I study, I used to always pray before. And when I'm in the exam room, I used to always pray before. Even, uh, even if I didn't know the answer in a paper, I used to just pray when I didn't know, and God used to like, give me the answer right there, and I used to write it. I passed all sciences with straight ones, so I thank God for that. And if he can do it to me, he can do it to you. Well, my parents, they was willing to send me lessons and stuff, but I personally, not a child, that like to go lessons, I rather learn on myself. So they just spent money like on textbooks, contact textbooks and stuff for me to use. And they were really supportive. When I used to be waking up all 2 o'clock in the morning and saying, trying to study, they used to be like, come have something to eat and stuff. And they used to pray with me and stuff too. So I really thank them for having them as parents. Thank you very much, Abigail. Rema remain right there. Yes, yeah. So as you realize that she had put her trust and dependence on her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, involved in church, involved in music. And, you know, being involved in, in various things helps you to be very much balanced. Amen? And it's amazing. Nine subjects, six straight ones, the sciences, and I believe those are the areas that you want to pursue, your A-levels and so on. Amen? And we thank God for that. And this is a word of encouragement to the younger ones. And we have some brilliant young people coming up. 
our next batch of young people, and maybe in a year or two, they will be coming and sharing their testimonies here. Amen. We have Kemta's daughter, Liliana. We have uh, Diana's daughter, Kezia. And we have others. And we just highlight these this morning because of their success. And to give you encouragement as young people. And to also encourage the parents. You know, the role of parents is so, so important in encouraging these children. As Abigail said, the parents were there 2 o'clock in the morning. They had her side to offer something to eat, something to drink, and they were there willing to take her wherever, be buying the books, the whatever that she needed, all the resources that she needed. And so important is the role of parents in the education of their children. So parents, I want you, you have young ones, you need to start gearing up yourselves and start giving all that necessary support for your children. That, that helps a lot. So we thank God, uh, yes, Abigail knows the Lord as her savior, and I know God has done great miracles for her. She had some issues with her vision recently, and God gave her a miracle. And you know, God just put things in place for great success. So give Abigail a big round of applause, and her parents, Monica and Faida, a big round of applause. So thank you. We, we have now Dr. Elizabeth, and she has qualified this year herself with her doctorate in medicine, and we want to hear from her, how was it possible? Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus. Well, in one line, I could say it's only possible because of Jesus, yeah? Because it's been five years, it's been a lot of studying, a lot of um, a lot of things that I missed out at home because I was in the next country, you know. And I could only say that God provides a certain amount of comfort that nobody else can provide for you. He will keep you throughout the good, throughout the bad. When I, when I watch in service at home um, at, in Barbados and I realize, hey, I really miss in service at home, you know, I miss in my family. It's only through God I was able to stay steadfast and keep focused on what I was, on what I had to do. Um, I was thankful for all the friends that I made back in, in uh, Barbados. And um, I'm the type of person who, I, I, like the, I like the people around me to have a certain vision like I have. I need people to support me in that way because I speed off the energy out of people. So I thank God that he placed me with the correct crowd from day one, I didn't have to worry about um, being led astray in any kind of way. My friends taught the same way that I taught. We had the same goals, the same visions. And I thank God for that. And I thank The first missionary journey of Saul, later on called Paul and Barnabas. So remember, the early believers, the, the, the disciples and the apostles, they were being persecuted wherever they went. But that did not keep them. As a matter of fact, the problems they were experiencing made them very uncomfortable where they were. And they had to move. But in the process of moving, wherever they went, because they had the blessings of God upon their life, because they were filled with the Holy Spirit, Wherever they went, they were a blessing to others. And that is what happens to you and I, friends. We are saved. We are filled with the Spirit of God. And you might be experiencing situations in your life. Ups and downs, and you feel discouraged. But guess what? Even in your discouragement, you could have the opportunity to share your testimony about Jesus and what he has done for you to somebody. And because of that, they are blessed. They are healed. They are delivered and set free. And that is how the gospel spread to the known world in those days. Because of persecution. You know the thing about it, when you study human beings, when we... When we become too comfortable, we do nothing, absolutely nothing. Are you following me? But sometimes when we are challenged, we dig deeper into our emotions. 
we dig deeper into our intellect, we dig deeper into our capabilities, and then you start to see, as you channel yourself in a particular direction, you start to see things coming out of you that you never thought you had before. So there is positive motivation as well as negative motivation. Somebody might pat you. Some of us are made up in a particular way. They, they pat us on the back and say, yes, you're going good, continue. And that spurs us on to another level. But others may take insults. And as you sit down and you, you think about it, and boy, look, look at my life. What is happening to me? I could be somebody better than this. And people have to always insult me and tell me all kind of negative things. I am going to show them that I will never remain in this condition. I will dig deep. I will do something to improve my state and my condition. They will never have to work their mouth so negatively on me again. And you dig deep into the things that are inside of you. And you come to a level of excellence. You see, human beings are made up in various ways. So the disciples, God knew that they would be comfortable. They would build a whole church and everybody gather in Jerusalem. And things will go really, really good. But remember, Jesus knew that. And he said, and he shall be witnesses. When he are filled with the Holy Spirit, he shall be witnesses unto Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the world. So God allowed certain things to happen in their lives. To spur them on. To reach souls. Because if they were only in Jerusalem, they would have been limited to the people they would reach. And that is why God has placed you being saved in your workplace, in your jobs, in your factories, in your offices, in the taxi that you drive, in the people that you interact with. God has placed you there to be a witness to others that people I cannot reach, but only you can reach. So use the opportunity wherever you are. And sometimes don't be Negative about the negative comments people make about you. Internalize it and say, God, I am not going to re remain this way. I shall rise. Lord, I want you to help me to prove them wrong. That I will be blessed. I will accomplish great things. And when you hear the story of people who have accomplished great things. There were days when they were way down and low down there. But they decided not to remain there. Are you following me? They decided I'm not going to remain there. I'm going to cry out to God and I want God to help me. And they had risen to great heights. And great accomplishments. So... With this common thread in the book of Acts, this is what you would see. While they went through their problems and their situation and their, their persecutions, great accomplishments were done. So here it is, in a prayer meeting in a place called Antioch, there were some prophets. And we must not deny the role of, of prophets and apostles in the church. Remember, we have a fivefold ministry. Pastors, apostles, prophets, uh, evangelists, teachers. There, there is a fivefold ministry. So there were some prophets and so on. And they said, and they started to speak in tongues and whatever. And they, they said, hear me. Prepare Paul and Barnabas, Saul and Barnabas. They have to go on a missionary trip. Separate them. Pray for them. And after they prayed, they, led, they were led and directed by the Holy Spirit. Saul and Barnabas left on a mission trip. And you will see as we look at the screen, the trip that they, they went on. So being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed on to Seleucia, and from then sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues 
of the Jews, and they all and they had also drawn to their minister. And when they had gone through the Isle of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus. So here while going now on this trip, things were happening. Visiting towns and cities, they came across a Obiaman. They put it here, they call it a sorcerer. And guess what? He was the advisor to one of the chief men in that place. Let me tell you something. Sorcerers and Obia men, a lot of people just go for them for advice. Eh? Because they want success. They want accomplishments. And the people go to them for advice. Because they feel they have connections, so to speak, with the unseen world. And this sorcerer, this Obia man, was was given advice to Elimus. Well, Elimus was the sorcerer. He was given advice to one of the chief men of the town. The deputy, verse 7 of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. So this chief man, the deputy of the town, he heard that Paul and and, and um, Barnabas were there and great miracles were taking place he also wanted to meet with them and when he sent for them the sorcerer, the Obia man was put in a block and said nobody with them fellas and them come to fool all you just as how they say about we church people and we pass them. yes see, them come to fool people boy eh? yes see, all the concern about making money this that the other and they, they, them only want to tie you up you know but I'm saying that when you get to know Jesus, not us, when you get to know this Jesus as Lord and Savior, you will be liberated and set free. We don't want you to serve us. We want you to serve Jesus. Amen? And that makes the difference. So this man was putting a block and a barrier and telling the deputy who he was advising, don't bother with his fellows and him. And word got to Paul and Silas. Now we are in the, 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 the job of telling people about Jesus Christ. The eternal things of God. To change people's lives. To bring salvation and healing and deliverance and miracles and blessings upon them. And you as a sorcerer, you telling him and don't bother with us. It made them vex. Why he was doing that? Keeping them, keeping the man, the deputy... In that state of dependency, where he would depend on him. And let me tell you, many, many of these people don't do things for nothing. Are you following me? They put in a cross in a sense that they said, it's a gift to her now, whatever you want to give, give. And some tell you flat, how much to give. They don't do things like that for nothing. Right? So, he wanted the deputy to be in a state of dependency on him. Only deal with me. I am the right one to advise you. And was keeping away the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ from the deputy. And when Paul heard of that, right? Hear yeah, what, what Saul, when I say Paul is the same person, Paul, Saul. His name was later on changed from Saul to Paul. Then Paul, who was called, Saul, who was called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of the righteousness, will, of ri all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? He said, Yeah, you fool in this man, and we who come to tell him the truth, you want to block that? You are a child of the devil. You're being used by the devil. Now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. So this man who was advising the deputy, 
Paul, who was in touch with the true and the living God, he spoke a word, he called him, he said, you are child of the devil boy. And I speak blindness over you. You will not see for a while. And as soon as he said that, a mist came over him and his eyes became blind. And he couldn't see anything and he had to have somebody hold his hand and walk out of there. When the deputies saw that, you know who he realized how much power? The soul and this Paul who was representing Jesus Christ. So the devil has some power, but he does not have all power. And that is why people run all over the place seeking advice, seeking this, seeking help from these sorcerers, from these over men. And they have you in a cycle. Because why? They deal, they're dealing with the devil itself. And you are to be dependent on them. But God, the true and the living God, has all power and all dominion over the powers of darkness and the devil and the enemy. And when the deputy saw that, he said, wait, I never see this kind of power. Dealing with this man, he has some power. But it's a man who has more power than he. And this soul represented Jesus Christ. He realized that Jesus has all power. All honor belongs to him. And guess what? You know what? The deputy became a believer of Jesus Christ. It took a negative situation like that. A man getting blind. Where the apostle Paul spoke a word, a negative word on him and he became blind. It took a situation like that. For another man's eye to be open spiritually. Are you following me? Because he was in blindness following that sorcerer. So it took an act like that for this man, this sorcerer, to become physically blind. For this other man's eye to be open spiritually. And friends, that is what happens in life. We are to learn from other people's mistakes and lessons for our eyes to open. Are you following me? Are you getting me this morning? When you see what people go through and the nonsense they do and the mistakes they make and the situation they reach up into, your eyes should be open to say, I'm not going down that road. Are you following me, friends? Your eyes should open. So even as young people, we say we we young and we strong and we moving around and, and we doing all kind of nonsense. Just wait a while and see what would be the end. And those that are observing, just watch and see what would be their end. And if you realize it's not a good end, that is not the road for you to take. Let your eyes be open. And we have young people in school, young people in college who would be in university and open your eyes and say, hear me, I ain't going that road, you know. I ain't going that road. Because I don't want to end up there. So sometimes it takes negative things to bring positive results. Amen? You understand the deeper lessons that we're learning from this journey? We're learning some important lessons. And here now, when this deputy accepted Jesus as his savior, the Apostle Paul had the opportunity to preach a powerful message. A powerful message. Now, this man would have been very influential. Those high-level political figures, they have all kind of friends and all kind of things. And when they call something, plenty of people just come out. So he would have called out all his colleagues and everybody. And the Apostle Paul had the opportunity to preach about Jesus from Genesis to the New Testament. We don't have time to go into that, but you would realize he said, he said, and after reading the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Amen, and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. So now they got also the inv an invitation to come into the synagogue and share the word of God. And when they shared the word of God, the truth of Jesus Christ, his saving grace, uh, be, that they could be washed with that blood that was shed on Calvary. Their eyes were open, and many accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. 
And when they finish, the leaders uh, say, hear me, I want you to come back next Sabbath again and preach again. So they had about two weeks of crusade. If we want to put it in that sense. They had about two weeks of revival because of the truth that was being exposed of Jesus Christ who was crucified, he died, and he rose again. And he's alive forevermore. Are we able to get up the... the, the all right, we, we had um, some internet problems, but I would have shown you on a, on a map the journey. All right, so they ministered there, right? But what always happens, friend, is the greatest opposition that you have is from religious people. The Jews opposed Paul and Barnabas very much. Wherever they went, the Jews opposed them. They felt that they knew everything. And who are these men? These Johnny-come-lately men who now say they get saved and have an, an experience with God. Who are they to come and tell us about God? And the Jews who thought they had all the rights to know the things of God, they were the ones that opposed them. But the Gentiles who were rejected by the Jews believed, many of them believed and accepted God and were filled with the Holy Spirit and their lives were changed. It is a bad state for us to read when we say that we feel we know everything and we need to know anything more. And these were the situation with the Jews. They thought they knew everything about God, not knowing that they were so far from God. They were so far from God and not willing to come to that understanding. So Sergius Paulus, he got saved and there was great revival in that place. And from there, they moved on to another place called Antioch. Remember, they came from, from that place called Antioch. There were two places. One where they came from and where the church was based, where they prayed for them and filled with the Holy Spirit and tell them, you're going on a journey. And there was another place, a smaller town called Antioch again. And they moved to that other place. And there were some experiences that they went through. This is Antioch in Galatia. Where, now, when these things took place with the deputy, word started to spread because there were traders moving around. You understand? Those were trade routes. And they were telling people, boy, there are two men there. Boy. You know, they pray. A man get blind. They, they, they obey. A man get blind. And so on. And the deputy got saved. And you know, when things are happening, when miracles are taking place, people are stoked. Because the thing about it, people have problems, people have issues, people going through situations, and they themselves want help. So when they were reaching in this little town called Antioch, news had already spread there that these men and them came. And guess what? They call them, they say, hear me, we want to hear from Olya. We want Olya to come in this synagogue and preach the gospel to us. Because we hear people are being healed, people are being delivered, people are being set free here. Wherever you went, we want you to come and minister to us. And the apostle, um, they went and they started to preach the word of God. It's verse 14 said, when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And after reading the laws and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and he that fear God, give audience 
The God of this people, of the Israel, chose our, fa our fathers and exalted them. And exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. And with a high arm brought them out of it. So he went, now I can't go into all of it. So he started again, giving from Genesis to the New Testament about what the prophets were saying and how God made a way for his people. Because although they were hearing the Torahs and so on, they could not make the connection between the Old Testament and Jesus coming in the scene. But yet, Jesus was mentioned in every book of the Old Testament. And here is the explanation he was giving them. That God's hand was upon his people Israel. And God spoke that a prophet will come. A Messiah will come. And it is that same Messiah who came. That they crucified him. They hung him on a cross. But he died and he rose again. And he's alive forevermore. And this is the one that I'm telling you about. And if you accept him as Lord and Savior, you will be saved. And you will become children of God. So that is the lesson that he put together to them because they could not understand. Even the, the, the religious Jews in, in, the, in the synagogue, they couldn't understand all of that. All they were concerned about do's and don'ts. Don't do this, don't do that, and the other. And they were more frustrating the people. They couldn't understand that God had a plan and his plan of salvation was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And this is what they were so excited to hear about. And when Paul and Barnabas started to preach and explain, when they started to preach and explain, then their eyes were open, their minds were open to realize who is this Jesus. Just as you and I. We came from many backgrounds. Religious orientation, religious belief. But the day we got to know about this Jesus, those of us who have made him Lord and Savior, our eyes were open spiritually to see that God has a plan for you and I. And when you study history, many of the, the established churches, so to speak, they used to read. Uh, people never used to be allowed to read the Bible, you know. Because uh, when the priest would go up, he would read in Latin. Any one of you remember those days? And you just say, he tells you to say a few words and you repeat it. You never even understood what was being said. And even in other religions, they speak in other languages. And you don't even understand what they're saying. All you have to do this, do that. Yeah, at the end of it, you don't even know what you do. It's the same thing to us today. We, we are encouraged to read the word of God. Examine it for yourself. Dig deep. Let the Holy Spirit help you to understand. So that you understand that God has a plan of salvation for you. And that plan of salvation is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Who went on the cross and died for my sins and yours. And to know him as Lord and Savior. So that you could be re rescued from a road of going to hell. And when we came to that knowledge, we were so happy to know this Jesus as Lord and Savior. That he changed and transformed our lives. And this is what the people were so happy to hear about. And he used the opportunity to preach about Jesus. But sad to say. That the ordinary folks were blessed. The Gentiles who were taught by the, by the Jews that you have no part with God business. He was ministering to them and they were blessed. And they, they got saved and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. But the Jews had a problem with that. And they would raise up what well, they would raise up persecution. And they would drive them out of that town. They would raise up persecution against them. And drive them out of that town. And verse 13. 46 it said. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said. It was necessary that the word of God. F should first have been spoken to you. He was telling the Jewish leaders. 
but seeing he put it from you and judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. So the Jews and the religious people were, were refusing what they were saying, although it was the truth. And he said that God has first designed this for you, you know. Even when Jesus came, he told his disciples, he said this is first for God's people, you know. But they rejected it. And the Apostle Paul went and started to preach to the gender. He said, this is for you. That's why I come to let you know this is for you. But because you rejected, I'm going to the Gentiles. And that is why the Apostle Paul was called the Apostle of the Gentiles. For so had the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. And this is a serious part. Verse 51 says, but they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. You know, they did just as Jesus told them. When you go, if people accept you, bless that, those people and bless that house and bless that place. But if they reject you, Jesus said, wipe the very dust out of your feet. from. Don't, don't even carry the dust with you. And that is what the apostles did. And you'd realize after history, the kind of problems those people had to experience. So they went now, but souls were saved. People believed in Jesus despite this persecution, despite they chased them out of there. The people who were saved and came to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, those people had great joy because they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And that is what is happening to us today. People might persecute you, say all kind of thing about you as a believer. But guess what? The joy that you have, nobody can take it away. The peace that you have, the, the world can't give it and the world can't take it away. Because deep down inside of you, you have the Holy Spirit. And you have a joy and a peace and a happiness that nobody else could give you. And they continued their journey. In chapter 14. So I want you to understand. And look at it. Persecu persecution made them move from place to place. Persecution made them move from place to place. And some of you may experience this. When people put in you down, don't stay down. Say, I will show you that I will rise. Dig deep and say, hear me, God help me. The way these people walk in and out against me, help me Lord, to prove them wrong. You dig deep and you get up and you move again. And in a few years time, those are the same people who start to respect you. So it says here now, they went to a place called Iconium. And it came to pass, chapter 14, verse 1, that they went both together unto the synagogue of the Jews and spoke, and so spake, that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. So they went in another town called Iconium. People knew they were coming out. They came out by the numbers. They fill out that synagogue. Whereas in the synagogue had one or two people come in to pray and very, very quiet. By that day when they went, the place packed out, they didn't have place. There was revival. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made them and made their minds evil affected against the, the brethren. Long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. 
But the multitude of the city was divided and part held with the Jews and part with the apostles. And when there was an assault made both of Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them, they were aware of it and fled to Lystra and Derby and, I, and La Laosinia unto the region that lied around about. So because of persecution again, now they had great services, great revival, people believed, people were saved. But the Jews rose up persecution and they had to move again. They had to move again. And they went in a certain, another place now called Lystra. L-Y-S-T-R-A. And here what happened there. Now they chasing them and tell nobody with these fellows and they're fooling all you. But people being taught, saved, healed, delivered, and set free, and people being blessed. They went in another town called Lystra. And here what happened in that town. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in, in the speech of Laosinia, The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. First time they see a miracle like this, a man who wore and crippled. And when the Apostle Paul was preaching, he saw that man come to the service. He watched him and say, I feel he reached the place to have faith. And he tell him, get up and walk. And that man stood up and started to walk. And the whole crowd who was there were amazed. But some people are so superstitious. They say, oh God, like, like God himself come down here. And they go on and they bullocks and this and all, all kind of offering. And they say, we had to make an offering to, to these men. When Paul and Barnabas heard that, they say, hey, 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 let mash up all of that way. Stop that. What nonsense all again. We are men just like you all. We have not done that. But we'll tell you who do that. And they get the opportunity to, to preach and tell them because of who this miracle takes place. Jesus Christ, who is Lord and Savior, healer, deliverer, mighty God and everlasting Father. He is the one that has made all this possible. That is why we sing this song, all the glory must be to God. No man on earth should glory in himself, but all the glory should be to God. And I'm glad to hear from those students this morning, they give God all the honor and all the glory. And when you have that attitude, God will take you higher and higher, greater accomplishments. We cannot do anything, friends. I cannot heal anybody. I cannot do anything. I can't do that. It is done by the grace and the power of God. And that is why to God be the praise, honor, and glory for all that he has done. And what he is continuing to do for us. So they wanted to worship Paul and Barnabas. He said, hey, all this stop that boy. We are men just like all that. And they said, don't do that. All you are doing foolishness here. And you could imagine great revival that was taking place. That's why I tell you all, wherever you are, God placed you there for a purpose. You might say you're working, is a little job you have. And ordinary people, the same people giving you pressure, they did all kind of thing. Watch me. See, the opportunity, although they're giving you pressure, guess what? They have, they have problems themselves. You know? They wouldn't tell you that. They wouldn't tell you what problems they're going home to meet. The nights they can't sleep. Wife sick, children sick. This, that, the other. They ain't going to tell you that. But when you figure out what is going on, say, hey, nah. man, let me pray for you. Nah. Let me pray for you. Seek the opportunity to tell them about Jesus and what he has done for you. And you'll be amazed to know when you pray for them, a miracle will take place. And then they realize the Jesus you serve, that he is real and he is alive and he is alive forevermore. Right there. You touch them. We may appear insignificant. We have no, no power. We have nothing. Die nothing. 
is not it because is not of us. It is all because of Jesus Christ. So don't ever lose the opportunity to tell somebody about Jesus. Always seek the opportunity, friend, regardless of where you are. Always seek the opportunity to tell somebody about Jesus. That could be the day that they have the greatest miracle in their life. The simple prayer that you pray could be the day they have the greatest miracle in their life because God honors your prayer. And the great revival took place there. But hear what? Trouble always following you. Verse 19 says, And there were, and there came certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. So the places that they had gone and miracles took place, the former place called Antioch, the little town I was talking about, and Iconium, where they drove them out, some of those Religious people came following them. Now revival taking place here. A man raised who never walked before. But some of the religious people come and say, Hey, all the other fellas here, they're only fooling all the way. Get them out of here. People feeling happy, people feeling joyous. Revival taking place, but they're talking opposing things against them. And guess what? They organized a crew of people and they came and they started to stone Paul while preaching. Bust up the man's head, he fall down in the ground. Right? And they leave he for dead. But those who were faithful around there, they were with him and he rose up. And guess what? He continued preaching again. Let me tell you something. We don't have physical stoning today. But you have emotional stoning. Why some people could hit you some lash so eh? It was done a boulders from the quarry. They boss you a long time. The words that they speak could be so negative. Breaking down your character, mashing you up, destroying you. It was done a stone hitting you. But guess what? Don't bother with that. Get up and move again. Because God is with you. He shall not leave you nor forsake you. He is with you even unto the end of the world. There's a saying that says, sticks and stones, what? Help me, help me with it. Right? So in other words, let people talk. God is able to stand up with you. So they beat up um, Paul. Moses said, leave him for dead. But he rose up and continued with the work. A lot of negative things could be hurled against you as a believer, as a child of God. Sometimes your family talking negative things against you, your friends talking, your neighbors talking things about you. But hear me, don't let that keep you down. Because guess what? The joy that you have, nobody could take it away. The peace that you have, hallelujah, not even the world can't give it. Not the world can't take it away. Let Jesus be always shining inside of you. He will give you the resilience to stand up. That's why we have to put our trust and dependence on him. And the Bible says, so Saul, they thought he was dead, but he rose up. And when they had preached the gospel to that city, and had taught many, they returned again unto Lystra and Aquinium. So they go on back to the, on their return trip to all those places that preach. And guess what? Believers had arisen, but they wanted somebody to be in charge of them. And wherever churches had developed in that first missionary trip, they went back, they visited all those places that they ministered, and they put people in charge. Elders in charge. You handle this work. You're a faithful man. You handle this one in Iconium. You handle in Lystra. You handle in there. And that is how the early churches developed. Because they had experienced the power of God. And in their return trip, they went back now to where they started on. At Antioch, the bigger city. Where they had the, the established church. And they shared the message of all that took place 
in their missionary trips. All the good times and all the bad times. Friends, in life journey you will have good time and you will have bad time. You think everything's smooth? No, it will never always be smooth. If you're looking for a life without trouble, friends, it's not in this world. It's not here. If that is what you want, better prepare for heaven. That's the best place. <laughs> With no tears and no sorrow, no pain, no suffering. And yet, thank God, that is the place that Jesus went to prepare for us. So, friends, this was the first journey of Paul and Barnabas. They had some good times and they had some difficult times. But in everything, they give God praise and honor and glory. This is your life journey and my life journey. There will be ups and there will be downs. But make sure when you go through your downs, you don't remain down. Let that spur you on to rise again. I always remember when I was going through a very depressed state in life. And nothing could encourage me. And one day I heard in 98.1, the preacher was preaching, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. Nobody could encourage me. I was a believer, Christian. But nobody and nothing could encourage me. And that word stood out to me. And he said, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. Let me tell you something. There might be times that nobody could say or do anything to help you. Guess what? God is telling you, start to talk to yourself. Start to encourage yourself. Say, I'll not remain here. I will rise. I will become a better person. I will do something about it. And you will see. The best one to talk to you Sometimes when you can't hear anybody else, it's yourself, you know. They go say you're mad, but I know problem. <laughs> and again, as I share a little testimony, I remember in my work life, you know, it has some bosses, they like to boss you around them. I mean, involved as a clerk and so on. Uh, has some boss bossing you around. <laughs> so I said to myself, but how these people is going on so why? Well, I mean, just because there's a boss. I said that would not always be so, you know. I go into better myself. And you know what that helped me to do? Start to do some studies and in a degree. I said, no, nah, no, nah, you're not taking that so why? And that what spurred me on to do some higher studies to better myself. I can't take on these holidays on my life, man. Until I became a boss myself. And I always remember, me, I'm going to treat people so. Because it, it was not nice talking to people any and anyhow. So I treat people with respect. So I went, I did something about it. Better myself, educationally. And I became a boss. And I said, no. Foremost in my mind, I'm not going to talk like to people like this. And people recognize that and they respect that. And many people will come to me without I even saying anything a Christian. Use a church man. Because they saw a difference. They saw Christ in me. Are you following me? Don't remain in your rut. Encourage yourself. Do something about it. You children who study and you feel the thing too hard, push a little harder. The hardest one, get at it. Get at it. Don't let people mash it on and remain. You could do something to arise. And David encouraged himself in the Lord. You talk to yourself now. Man. You, know, you know everything going on wrong and crazy in your life. You alone know that. You and God knows it. Talk to yourself and say, I'll never re remain so. Man. I have to arise. I will be better. And where there is life, there is hope. And where there is a will, there is a way. Come on, give the Lord a big clap this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we bless your holy name for you're worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Let us have some appropriate music playing. And, uh, you know, let us let the word of God soak deep down in our spirits. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we bless your holy name. Kemte, you could do something. I think they're having some issues with the internet this morning. Hallelujah. We worship and praise and bless your holy name for you're worthy to be praised. Come on, let's be in an attitude of praise and worship and prayer. Thank you, God. Let the, let the word soak deep down in our spirits this morning. This joy that I have, the world then gave it to me. No, no, this joy that I have, the world then gave it to me. No, no, this joy that I have, the world then gave it to me. No, no, the world then gave it, and the world can take it away. I lift your tithes on your offering here this morning. Bless it and multiply it, oh dear God. I lift every one of your child here this morning, oh dear God. Cover them under the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 